it's a lot of effort. There's some heartache involved. Um, some days are good. Some days suck. Some days suck bad. Well, hey, friends and neighbors, this is Chuck out at Sheraton Park Farms. Welcome back to the farm. So this video is going to be just a little bit different uh, than one that we've done, than the ones that we've done most recently. This is, I think, what you call one of those talking head videos. Um, not going to be much action in this, but I want to talk about something that I'm seeing a lot of questions about and a lot of folks are uh, kind of starting to explore um, how to get into farming. And one of the common things that I see is folks talking about how expensive it is to get started in farming. So what I want to talk about today is how can you start farming or even expand your farming enterprise that you're on now, that you're doing now without one additional acre of land. So stick around and let's talk about that and uh, let's see if we can tease some of this stuff out. So I moved around to the back of the tractor so I can sit on the mower uh, instead of standing. So, and also I've got notes today. Uh, it's kind of unusual. Usually I do these just kind of on the fly. But um, what sort of got me started thinking about this is uh, the other night I'm in a number of different Facebook groups that are farming related, pig related, chicken related, all that kind of stuff that we're into around here. And I saw a young man post that how in the world is somebody supposed to get in farming and get started farming? How are we going to feed the nation when it's so expensive to get started in farming because land costs are through the roof? And you know, he's absolutely right. And it does make things really, really difficult to get started in farming, especially for a young person. When you don't have a lot of money or you don't have a nest egg built up to go out and buy farmland. Um, used to, when you were trying to buy farmland, farmland was sold based on the production capacity. Um, you know, how much would that piece of land produce over, you know, a period of time, usually a year. And then usually you would kind of figure that in after, you know, five, six, eight years or whatever, you could have recouped your cost uh, for the farm uh, to pay back the loan on that property. And that's not really the case anymore. Nowadays, land prices are just out the roof, you know, and, and they're not making it anymore. So that, that adds to it. So there's two things uh, that got, well, first off, that got me thinking, that got me thinking, well, you know, how can folks get started? What are some ways that you can get, get into farming without buying land? Or if you already do have a, a piece of land, uh, and you have a small farming enterprise, how can you expand that? So there's two ways uh, that I've thought uh, would make sense. And there's one I want to focus on, but the first one I want to talk about is one that Greg Judy talks a lot about, uh, Joel Salatin talks a lot about, and there's some, some other guys that are really big in the farming world that talk about this, and that's leasing land. And that certainly is a great option uh, if you're somewhere where there's farmland that you can lease. Um, there are absent landowners that would love to have someone come in and take care of a piece of property, um, improve that property, use it for a production, uh, use it for production agriculture, cattle, you know, pasture chickens, pigs, whatever the case may be. There are a lot of absent landowners. You know, they've inherited a piece of property in North Carolina and they live in Florida or Texas or somewhere else, and they would like to have somebody utilizing that property to take care of it. The trick with that is you've got to find that um, and that takes some effort and both of these take effort and if you're not willing to kind of get off your rump and do a little bit of work neither one of these are going to work so uh, that's the first thing you got to be aware of is that this does take a little bit of work and it takes some effort and you've got to put some sweat equity into it and success is not going to happen overnight but you can find land to lease also, if you have an existing farm, you also, you've got an existing farm and enterprise and you need to expand, that's an additional way that you can expand your farm without actually purchasing more land is to find a lease. A um, lot of advantages with that, you know, typically lease payments are 100% deductible on your taxes because it's a farming expense. Um, so leasing is a good option, but the option that I want to talk about today is how can you get started farming if you don't have any property and you can't get a property lease? But you want to get into this space. And this is an idea that I've heard some folks talk about um, and got to thinking a little bit about it. And we actually do some of this on our farm with our beef. Um, and I'll get to that in just a minute. But the first thing that you want to do if you're interested in getting started, uh, getting started into farming is 
you've got to develop and determine how you want to farm. What is the um, what is your north star? What's the compass that you're working around? Are you interested in raising animals on production scale, uh, like a Tyson chicken house, or you know a feedlot uh, beef operation? Or are you more interested in doing things the way we do it? And that's the way that I that's what I see a lot of folks interested in is getting started into farming in a more natural way, um, multiculture farm, grass based, pasture based, um, raising animals the way that they're intended to be raised regular rotation, uh, utilizing uh, symbiotic relationships between herbivores and birds and using pigs to till land and clear land and that kind of thing. So if that's your compass and that's how you want how you want to um, how you want to farm, you need to start putting that out there. Start telling folks what kind of farming you want to do, what kind of farmer you are how you want to raise those animals, how you want to uh, heal the earth, how you want to grow soil. Um, start talking about that. Get your story out there. Tell people about who you are and get, get, some, get some fans, get some folks that believe in that kind of farming, believe in that local food, believe in that ethically raised food, and start building a base of customers, a base of fans, folks that are interested in what you do and what you want to do. And you're going to start to find that those folks that have an interest in that are going to get behind you and they're going to support you and you're going to start to build this base of, of a lot of folks call it a tribe uh, and you're going to start to build that tribe out so the first thing you want to do is you want to start putting out who you are and what your compass is in terms of how you want to raise animals start with a facebook page a website whatever that is get involved in some of these communities that are doing that kind of thing um, if it's market gardening, you know, start getting your name out there and start getting folks interested in, in the same thing that you're interested in. You want to start doing that, and that's marketing. You want to start doing your marketing early. The how, the why of what you're doing, uh, what you're doing. How are you going to raise your animals? How are you going to do your, how are you going to do your gardens? Start talking about and marketing that concept. Um, you've got to get folks on board before they're ever going to buy the first tomato, the first pack of lettuce, the first chicken breast, whatever the case may be, you got to get you some fans building. Now this is where if you have an existing farm and you want to you want to expand your farming enterprise and we do this with our beef or if you're just getting started, find a farm that does things the way you want to do them and partner with that farm. Partner with that farm in a way that you can start selling their product for them, marketing it as the way you want to farm. And I know there are probably going to be some purists out there that are saying, no, 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 you can't do that. And that's fine. If you don't believe in, in doing that, doing it that way, that's perfectly fine. Um, and, I, and I get that. But if you're interested in farming and you don't have any land, you've got to find a farm that can help you jumpstart your business. So partner with a farm that's you know, in your area, maybe they're a couple hours away, you know, go to them and say, you know, I'm interested in, in farming the way you guys are. Um, don't want to be any competition to you, but would you be interested in maybe me buying some of your product at a, at a discounted price? Um, I'll buy bulk, and then you've got your base of customers that you're going to take it to and sell it. And so you do that for a while. You do that for, you know, maybe six months, a year, a couple of years until you can get a nest egg built up. And what that does is that also gets you some capital rolling. If you go buy a, let's say that you buy a cow, you've, you've gone around and you've marketed to folks that you want to do grass fed beef and you want to raise beef on pasture without hormones, antibiotics, um, and any of that kind of thing. And you found enough folks that will buy a cow's worth of beef Go, buy, go to a farmer that's raising those cows the way that you would raise them, buy that beef, and then sell it to your customers with a profit attached to it. Now you've rolled your capital over one time and you've got a little bit of profit. Now, how many times can you do that? Can you do that once? Can you do it twice? Can you do it 10 times? Um, that's dependent upon your marketing skills. So find a tribe that's interested in the way things that uh, interested in farming the way you want to do farming. 
find out what products they want, find a farm that can supply you with those products and sell those products back to those customers. Now here's how we've done that with our beef and if you have a farming operation here's how you can do it to expand out what you're currently doing on your farm. We started out in the pastured chicken space and in the pastured pork space. We want to do beef. We had a couple of cows here last year. Uh, we don't have appropriate infrastructure for that. We didn't have enough grass for that. This year we would have had plenty of grass, but we don't have enough grass for that. So right now growing beef on our farm just doesn't make sense. But we want to get into beef. We want to sell beef. We've got customers that want beef because they've bought our chicken, they've bought our pork, they believe in our story, they believe in how we do things on our farm. So we've gone and we've found another farm, just happens to be some friends of ours, that raise animals the same way that we raise them. And we buy two, three, four cows at a time from that farm. We go pick those animals up, we take them straight to the processor, and then when that, when that product is done, we bring it back, put it in our freezer, <clears throat> and then we market it and sell it to our customers under our label. We explain, we didn't raise these cows, but this is how those animals were raised. This is how um, the farm that we buy these, these animals from, uh, this is how they farm. They match our compass, they match our ethics, they match the way that we want to, that we want to raise animals. So we've built that in. We can realize a pretty decent profit on those animals and they never set foot on our farm. So again, if you're not farming but you want to get into, get into that world, partner with a farm that's doing things the way you want to do it, buy those animals at a discount, whether it's a live animal, whether they've processed the animals, however you can work that out, Sometimes it's better if you can have your own processing set up, then you can control your cut sheets, you can control your, your packaging, all that kind of thing. So that's another thing you need to take into consideration is how are you going to get those animals done? So um, once you get a couple of years of that under your belt or you get some rotations of your money under your belt and you've built some capital, now you're starting to get some working capital that you can lease some land. You maybe can start buying some land. Um, but you've got to start somewhere and the first place you got to start is your story. You need to have customers pulling your product, wanting more of your product as opposed to you sitting on a bulk overabundance of your product that you're trying to push. So building that tribe, building that audience and getting that customer base to start with in the beginning um, gets you started. Now after you've done it for a while, you've got your capital built up, you've got some land leased, you've got some land purchased, now you can change, you can move that production over to something that you're doing as opposed to letting else do that. So you now can put in the fence, put in the water, graze the cattle, build the chicken tractors, bring the chickens in, do the chicken processing on your farm, um, and so that gives you the opportunity to start controlling the production side. With the production, you are going to assume a lot more risk. So that's something that you're going to have to take into consideration is thinking about um, the risk that you're going to assume. So, um, you know, that's where the other, that's, uh, I've talked about this before. I think that's where we as farmers uh, and people that are producing food, um, you've got to get paid for your risk. We've suffered loss a couple of times on this farm this year um, in terms of we assumed the risk and then we lost the bet. Um, you know, we had Miss Googly Eyes who died within six or seven days of going to processing. We lost six turkeys just last week that were within two days of going to processing. So that was money that we had, um, we, that's money that we would have accumulated if we had been able to take those animals to processing, but we lost every penny of it because we had put time, effort, feed, work, um, and capital into those animals, but then we ended up losing it on the backside. So 
these are ways, you know, these are a couple of ways that you can get started farming or you can expand your farming enterprise without owning land, without uh, owning any additional land other than what you've already got. Um, I think the take home message here is if you're interested in farming and if you're interested in getting into farming, um, you can do it, but some of the traditional buy land, buy a tractor, get started farming that way um, is cost prohibitive in today's world. So you've got to figure out new and creative ways to figure out, um, figure out how to get into that space and get started in farming. Anyway, I know this is a lot of rambling. Don't know if it's going to make any sense, um, but hopefully there's somebody out there, you know, that, that um, you can take these principles and apply them and, uh, and put it to work on in, you know, in your world and in your context. So <clears throat> um, lastly, if you're interested in farming, again, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I encourage you to do it. It's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of effort. There's some heartache involved. Um, some days are good. Some days suck. Some days suck bad. Um, but for us, the good days outweigh a whole lot of the bad. So it is a, it's a good lifestyle. Um, we enjoy it. We feel very, very blessed to be able to do this. And again, you know, I, I said the other night on the live stream, our payoff is when we look at our numbers at the end of the, end of the day on market day and we see that over the course of the next week, we're going to help feed 50, 60, 70, whatever the number may be. We're going to help feed that number of families high quality, locally raised food um, that they can feel good about eating and they can feel good about feeding their kids to. Uh, and it's not coming out of a box. So for us, that's, that's the big payoff. Um, and that's what means the most to us. Anyway, I've rambled enough. I'm going to post a link to a couple of videos over here, some other stuff we've got going on. Um, follow along. The subscription button is going to pop up in the center of the screen. If you've not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Follow along with us. Uh, we've got a lot going on here at the farm. And uh, appreciate y'all watching. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks.